So there's a huge fight coming up for you this weekend. British middleweight champion Nathan Heaney taking on Brad Pauls in Birmingham. The hitman goes into this fight unbeaten in his first 18 fights. And the man from Stoke has been personally delivering tickets for the night to fans in his hometown. I'm pleased to say Nathan is with us now. Good morning, Nathan Heaney. Good morning, Nathan. Morning, Nathan. Good morning, good morning guys. You OK? Yeah, good. Very thank good. you. Very, very well. Thanks. Are you looking forward to this weekend? I certainly am. Today's the weigh-in, so I've got to... It's just not... Everything's... I woke up this morning, everything's great. So, yeah, it's just this last little bit where you're a bit hungry, a bit thirsty. But hmm. well, once that weigh-in happens at 2pm, then the pizza gets in you and you feel amazing. So, yeah. No beer yet, though. No beer or wine yet, though. <laughs> no, no. Nathan, how's your training gone? Because, you know, you go into it. You're probably... I'm not going to say you're like a horse, but you have you, you sort of calm down now. The last week of... Uh, you're just ticking over, aren't you? You've done all your hard training and now you're ready to go. Yeah, exactly. So Steve will gr grind me to the bone over eight to ten weeks. And then the last week, like you say, he's just tapering down. All the old work's been done. You just keep the yep. intensity a bit high, but everything's reduced massively. So you just sharpen up and just feel good. Because as, as the weeks go along, it's just so hard like mm. in terms of the training mentally and physically. But once you're there that last week, it's the light at the end of the tunnels there. And it just, you, you start feeling really, really good. Obviously, you're taking on Brad Pauls in Birmingham uh, on Saturday, Nathan. I mean, yep. what's his strengths? And do you really care? <laughs> yeah, he, he, no, he's, he's, got, he, he's got very good fundamentals. He's got, a, he's got a very good jab. He's got a solid base behind him. He, he can punch. He's, I think he's not 10 out of 18 out, so he, he's, he's a puncher. And, he, and he's going to have a lot of desire as well. But, but the fact of the matter is, like, in my last fight, I was a massive underdog going into it, and I won the British title. And, and, and I know what can happen on the back of me winning fights from now on in, in terms of the massive nights for Stoke on Trent and stuff that can happen. So I've just got to keep focused because I've got a lot of desire myself. So, and I've just got to nullif nullify whatever he's good at. Can I ask about the, the tickets delivery and you handing them out to, to fans at home? How did that come about? Yeah, th that's a strange one. That, that's, for some reason, that's like been picked up a bit recently on, so on social media and stuff. But I've done that for six years, like since Aww. I stopped, had my debut. The, different, the only difference is, is on my debut, there were 60 people that went. And on me, and this fight, there's over two thousand people that went, so it's much easier on me yeah. debut. But it, but yeah, it's just it's just something I've always done, it's, and I really enjoy doing it. To be honest, it's just yeah, it makes sure. For example, this is the reason why I deliver the tickets. I sent some out by delivery, uh, by first class recorded, and and it got delivered on the 28th of February. I had a message yesterday from a guy saying, "Hey mate, the tickets haven't arrived yet." I was like, "What? They should." So I looked on the reference number. They've been delivered. He signed them, but. Yeah, so if I post the tickets personally, <laughs> I know, know they've there. got to that door. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. And, no, if I've got to ask you, how do you plan it? So, look, let's say you go into the weekend and you win the fight, and then you, have you got people in mind already who you'll be looking towards the next one? Yeah, usually it just depends on some of the time frame between fights. But if you've, you've got a four, let's say a three to four month window between fights, I'd have a week off. Yeah. So, I'll have a bottle of wine. Bit of food, a bit of that, and then and then it's straight back in. Then, but the intensity is not as high, mm. so you just steadily, you just keep it as steady, but you just don't want to lose any fitness that you gained in those previous weeks that you've been grafting. Nate, there's, there's lots of uh, talking points of the boxing at the minute. I was just wondering your thoughts on obviously Jake Paul's going to be fighting Mike Tyson in Los Angeles. What do you make of that? Yeah, for me, I, I'm just hoping that this kind of YouTuber, although although to be fair to the lad. He is more legit in terms of some of the fights he's fighting in shape for, but, but this whole influencer YouTube thing, the, the quicker that dies down, the better, because it does not benefit boxing. Trust me, it, it only alienates the hardcore supporters. And when these YouTubers and stuff disappear, which they will do in the very near future, the whole crop crowd that came with them will also disappear, but the hardcore will, will be gone. So you don't want to alienate the hardcore people that love boxing, in my opinion, that is. Yeah. Nathan, we know you're a massive Stoke fan, as we can see, even your shirt behind you. That bottom of the table in the championship is amazing, isn't it? I mean, they've, they've really picked up. And Stoke were in that bottom three for, for a small uh, time, but they've managed to get themselves out of it now. But it's going to be so competitive to come the end of the season. And you've got a massive, another massive game this weekend against Norwich. Yeah, it's unreal. It's, um, I mean, three weeks ago, I was, I was fearing the worst. I was thinking, I just can't see how we're going to get out of this. But the lads have really gripped, grafted... Like they had Middlesbrough, good win away there. Then yeah. they had Le uh, the home there. Then they had Leeds away. And then they beat Preston the other day. So it's just, yeah, it's just, it's weird. 
and it's really good. And, and now you're literally one way away from being 14. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's so tight, like it's that bottom of the table, so tight. But what I like is it's just the grit that the lads are showing. They're, they're really fighting for it. There's some rumours going around um, that Stephen Schumacher may be sacked. How do you feel about that? And is that what you're yeah, looking the, for? I, I, think that, I think that was a weird rumour about two or three weeks ago. Like I say, when when this when it looked like what's going to happen here with the club? Are, are we mm. are we going down for League One or what? What? But but Schumacher's a very good manager, and and from all accounts, people say he's a great coach as well. So it's just one of them. The, the, the players are grafting for the shirts, and that's it. And then, and then everything else will come together. Then. If he's got time to do something in transfer window at the end of the season, he can then put his own mark onto the squad because it was a brand new squad at the start of the season that was made by Alex Neil, and there was some there was, there was some gems in that squad like Jono and Berger and stuff. And it, but but other than that, he just yeah he wants to put his mark on the team. Nath, I I, let us know what's happening with the club at the minute because are the Coke's family still involved? Uh, yeah, yeah they, have they left? No, they're, they're still like John Coates, still the seat, like the, the the main man at the club and, and stuff and running it. So, they, like, listen, uh, all like transfers and stuff aside, they're still a fan, they're, they're fantastic what they do for the city in terms and the club as well. Like they do. Now, listen, this doesn't. They, you can't say our oh, poor results. Oh, we get free away travel, but that's good because even though the results are bad, but they do. They, they, like the, the tickets, the season tickets have been frozen since the Premier League for like the last twelve. 12 years, not ridiculous. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's, they've been very good to the people of Stoke, but obviously it's just, we want the results now. Yeah.